Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talalipop and this video might be a bit of a surprise for some of you since so far on my channel I've only covered bicycles from Trek, but today I decided to finally take a shot at another popular brand which is Specialized. Before getting my Trek Marlin 5, I was looking at bikes offered by Specialized as well and especially their Rock Hopper and Pitch lineups. The Rockhopper lineup actually has five different bikes in it, so things get a bit confusing if you're trying to figure out which one you want to buy. So in this video, I'm going to compare all five Rockhopper models with each other, focusing on the main differences between these bikes that will affect how they ride on trails. I'm going to keep this organized as I always do by focusing on a different component at a time, such as the suspension fork, the wheel set, or the drivetrain, which includes the various drivetrain parts like the cassettes, so you can get a more in-depth comparison. And like always, I will be making tables at the end of this video that show all the main differences in one place to make it easier to see what changes between the models. And if you do happen to be interested in bicycles offered by Trek as well, I have made several different comparison videos on those bikes, including ones on the Marlin series which should be comparable to this Rockhopper lineup. But before we get into it, I'm going to give a quick background on the Rockhoppers. If you don't know much about Specialized, the Rockhopper is an iconic bike that has generally been a pretty popular bike for mountain bikers, and Specialized has completely revised the bike for 2021. It is classified as a cross-country bike, so it is intended to be lightweight, but the lineup does also include some inexpensive entry-level bikes for beginner mountain bikers, or for people who want a more durable commuter bike. There are no gender-specific versions of any of these bikes, but what's really interesting about them is that each of the five models come in 27.5 and 29-inch wheel sizes, so you can choose which wheel size you prefer. This does also mean that the frames are different between these sizes, so you cannot just get a 27.5 rock hopper and put a 29 inch wheel set on it. There are also 26 inch wheel size versions available, but only in the two least expensive models, and they only come in extra extra small frame sizes. A few more things to note are that the price of these bikes remains the same regardless of the wheel size, and while the 29er bikes come in most sizes, the extra small frame size is reserved for the 27.5 bikes. But with that stuff out of the way, let's get into the comparison. The five bikes in this lineup are the normal Rockhopper, the Rockhopper Sport, the Rockhopper Comp, the Rockhopper Elite, and the Rockhopper Expert. For my comparison, I'm just going to show images of the 29-inch wheel bikes to make things simple, but before we get into those differences, I do want to talk about all the similarities between these five bikes so we have some sort of baseline to work off of. So each bike in the Rockhopper lineup, for a specific wheel size, uses the exact same frame, stem, handlebars, grips, seat post, and the seat. I won't focus on these components in this video since if you do get any of the Rockhopper bikes, you will get these components regardless of which bike you choose. Alright, now let's finally get into the differences. The things that change between these bikes are the price, the suspension forks, the brakes, the wheel sets, which include the hubs, rims, and tires, and the drivetrain, which includes things like the cranksets, derailers, and the cassette. Now I want to quickly note that I won't go over every single one of these components in detail, but I will go over the main ones. So starting with the price, the regular Rockhopper comes in at $500, while the Rockhopper Sport is priced at $600. The Comp model costs $750, while the Elite is $950. And the Rockhopper Expert is $1,125. Moving on, we have the suspension forks. The smaller frame sizes have varying amounts of travel that are less than 100 millimeters, but most bikes all use 100 millimeters of travel, and all of them use quick release axles, so you can get the wheel off the bike without a tool. However, having quick release axles does sacrifice some front end rigidity. Both the Rockhopper and Rockhopper Sport use the SR Suntour XCE29 coil fork, which has 28mm stanchions. This fork is pretty entry level and makes sense for these bikes, 
but the Rockhopper Comp upgrades to the SR Suntour XCM29, which has larger 30mm stanchions to better absorb those bumps on the trail, and it has a lockout which allows you to prevent the suspension from engaging if you are riding in a flat area so you can go faster. And lastly, both the Rockhopper Elite and Rockhopper Expert use the RockShox Judy Air Fork, which also has 30mm stanchions. This fork is a big upgrade since it is much lighter, provides better dampening, and is more adjustable for your weight being an air fork. Next we have the brakes. The regular Rockhopper uses Radius CX-7 mechanical disc brakes with 160mm brake rotors in the front and rear, while the Rockhopper Sport uses Tektro hydraulic disc brakes with 160mm rotors as well. Hydraulic disc brakes work much better than mechanical disc brakes in terms of stopping power, and they require less maintenance after being set up the first time. They also work better in all weather conditions. And then the top three bikes all use the same Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes, with 160mm rotors only in the rear, and 180mm rotors in the front for that added stopping power. These Shimano brakes are pretty reliable and very popular among bikes at this price range, so they should definitely work fine. Now let's talk about the wheel sets as a whole. All the rims are 25mm wide, but the Rockhopper and the Sport bikes use the same specialized alloy rims, while the Comp goes to the stout alloy 28 hole rims for lighter weight. The Elite and Expert models use tubeless ready rims from Stout, which are also 28 hold. All the bikes use 2.3 inch wide tires, but the Rockhopper, Rockhopper Sport, and Rockhopper Comp all use the same ground control sport tires which are more entry level tires, while the Elite and Expert bikes use the ground control tubeless ready tires. Only the top end Rockhopper Elite and Rockhopper Expert bikes have the full tubeless ready setup, which is beneficial since going tubeless makes your bike lighter, allows you to run a lower PSI, and eliminates the risk of getting pinch flats from thorns and other sharp objects. And finally we have the drivetrain, which is the main difference between these bikes. Each bike uses a different drivetrain, with the normal Rockhopper using a 2x8 mixed drivetrain where each part is actually from a different company or lineup, though it does include a Shimano Tourney and Altus part. The Rockhopper Sport upgrades to a 2x9 setup which is mainly Shimano Altus, while the Comp model uses the Microshift Advent 1x9 system. The Rockhopper Elite upgrades to the Shimano Dior 1x10, and the Expert uses a SRAM SX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain. The Shimano Tourney drivetrain is an entry level Shimano drivetrain, while the Altus is a step above that one and should be a bit quicker and more reliable in terms of shifting properly. The Micro Shift drivetrain is a 1x drivetrain, so there's only one chainring in the front, which simplifies the drivetrain for trail riding since you don't need all those speeds. The Shimano Dior is Shimano's entry drivetrain for serious mountain biking, so it should definitely perform pretty well, while the SRAM SX Eagle is SRAM's entry drivetrain for mountain biking. Now let's get into some of the main components that make these drivetrains really differ from one another. Starting with the shifters, the Rockhopper uses a Microshift TS39 8-speed shifter, which is a normal shifter, but the Rockhopper Sport upgrades to the Shimano Altus 9-speed shifter, with Shimano's Rapid Fire Plus shifting, which allows you to downshift up to 3 gears at once. The Rockhopper Comp uses a Microshift Advent 9 speed shifter to go along with its Microshift group set, but it should be noted that Microshift parts are not compatible with SRAM or Shimano parts. The Rockhopper Elite uses the Shimano Dior 10 speed shifter, which also has Rapid Fire Plus shifting and works with the Dior drivetrain, while the Expert uses the SRAM SX Eagle 12 speed shifter, which allows you to upshift up to 5 gears at a time instead of downshifting 3 like the Shimano's. Next, we are going to talk about the rear derailleur, which is pretty important. The Rockhopper uses a Shimano Tourney 8-speed derailleur, while the Sport uses a Shimano Altus 9-speed derailleur for its 2x9 drivetrain, which should shift a bit more smoothly as well. 
The comp uses a microshift advent derailleur, which is nice because the derailleur has a clutch mechanism that adds tension to the chain, so there's a decreased risk of the chain skipping gears or falling off the bike entirely. The Rockhopper Elite and Expert models both use clutch derailleurs as well, but the Elite uses a Shimano Dior, which should shift pretty fast and smooth compared to the previous derailleurs, and the Expert uses the SRAM SX Eagle derailleur, which is very good as well. The last component to consider is very crucial as well, and that is the cassette. The Rockhopper uses a Sunrace 11-34 tooth 8-speed cassette, while the Sport uses a Sunrace 11-36 tooth 9-speed. The Comp uses a Microshift Advent 11-42 tooth 9-speed, and the Elite has a Sunrace 11-42 tooth 10-speed. And finally, the Rockhopper Expert comes with a SRAM PG-1210 Eagle 11 to 50 tooth cassette. You may notice that as we go up the model range, the number of teeth in the largest cog in the cassette also goes up. This generally translates to easier pedaling while going uphill, and as the speeds increase going from 8 to 9 to 10 to 12, you will receive a wider range of gears in the 1x drivetrains for more efficient pedaling. Alright, so ultimately, in my opinion, the regular Rockhopper is for someone who wants either a rugged commuter bike or is on a tight budget, while the Rockhopper Sport is more for the beginner mountain bike rider, and the Comp is a little bit better with some nicer features like the suspension lockout and the one by drivetrain to make things a lot easier and smoother on the trail. The Elite is a great value in my opinion since it comes with that tubeless ready setup and the Judy Air Fork which is very good. And the main difference between the Elite and the Expert is that the Expert does use that SRAM 1x12 drivetrain instead of the Shimano Dior, so that's a little bit more of a personal preference on if you prefer Shimano or SRAM drivetrains, but it is important to remember that the SRAM is a 1x12 drivetrain instead of the 1x10, so it will have a wider range to make your riding easier and faster on the trail. And that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and if you did enjoy the video or if it helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe, and leave a comment below if you noticed a mistake or have any questions or suggestions for me. But yeah, I hope you guys liked my first video on a specialized lineup, and hopefully I can continue to do more in the future. But for now, I really appreciate your guys' support, and remember to keep biking, guys.